Hello and welcome to the Win It Mum Sock Along. I'm Christine, Win It Mum, and I created my basic four ply socks pattern and the sock along tutorials to help you knit a pair of socks. First of all, what is a sock along? Well, in the craft community, there are often knit alongs and crochet alongs where lots of people will work on the same project all at the same time so that they can encourage and support each other as they go along. After lots of people have told me that knitting socks is far too hard for them to do, I decided to create a sock along and my sock along tutorials for exactly the same reason so that lots of people could all work on the same project at the same time and I could help them as they learn to knit their first pairs of socks. Most knit alongs and crochet alongs have a finite time limit but this sock along started in 2015 and it's still going. It's always the right time to join in and I'm really glad that you're here. You can find the sock along tutorials on my blog here at winnickmum.co.uk forward slash sock along. I've written them as if we're sitting together working on our socks because I think it's always nicer to knit with a friend and there are lots of photos to help you and you can use the videos on my YouTube channel as well if you need to. I originally created the tutorials to run over the course of three weeks with some additional get started tutorials about choosing yarn and needles and working tension swatches as we'll talk about in a minute and these original tutorials were and still are free on my blog. As time went on, I was asked for an offline copy of the tutorials because not everyone can or wants to be online all the time. And I decided that the best way to produce this was to create a proper book that was big enough to prop open with your mug of tea whilst you're working from it, with space for notes as well, because once you've knitted a pair of socks for yourself, there's a good chance you're going to want to knit more. It was obviously the right idea as over 10,000 copies have been sold so far. Wow. Super Socks has got the same information as the online tutorials, but it's set out slightly differently to suit a book format. Why have both? And why give my online tutorials away for free when I can sell a book? Well, I believe that there are such important well-being benefits from knitting, and knitting socks in particular, there's some kind of magic that happens in those tiny rounds, you know, that if someone has the money to buy only the yarn and the needles or the book, I want them to get started straight away. There's so much information for new sock knitters and it can get a bit overwhelming. I'm not going to show you lots of new techniques or give you lots of options to choose from. We're going to knit a pair of socks together using the pattern that I've used for over 15 years now, which has been adapted for lots of pairs of feet and which I am quite sure is going to be perfect for your feet too. My sock along tutorials are based on the proverb of give someone a fish and they'll eat for a day, teach them how to fish and they'll never go hungry. Or in other words, I encourage you to work out what suits you and your feet rather than just giving you information to follow without explaining why. Once you've made a pair of socks using my tutorials, you'll be able to adapt the pattern to suit anybody that you want to knit for and with any foot requirements as you'll know how to make those adjustments. Don't worry, it will all make sense as we go through it and it's not as hard as you think. I've helped thousands of knitters and crocheters across the world to knit socks and there have been well over 15,000 pairs of socks knitted using these tutorials that I know of. I have a fun count on the Sock Along's birthday every year. So you're in good company and you can do this. 15,000 pairs of socks, that is incredible. It's been a real joy to be able to help all of those people as they've learned to knit socks for themselves, for their friends and their family and I really hope that your pair of socks is going to add to that number too. Let's take a quick look through each of the tutorials. The basic four ply socks pattern. Firstly, you can download a copy of the basic four ply socks pattern to work through alongside the tutorials. It can be helpful to have the two together and of course you can make notes on the pattern as well. There's a copy of the pattern in the back of Super Socks, but it's still a good idea to download the copy from the blog so that you've got the best of both worlds having the information in front of you and next to you while you work on it as well. If you're worried about using thin foreplay or fingering yarn, you can use any of my thicker yarn basic socks patterns instead as they will still work with the tutorials. You'll just use bigger needles and fewer stitches, so you'll need to refer back to that pattern if there's mention of numbers in the tutorial. Choosing your sock yarn. 
If you're brand new to sock knitting, I need to warn you that it is an extremely addictive hobby and once you disappear down that rabbit hole of searching the internet for yarn, you're going to be gone for some time. There is so much choice and the choice is even bigger now than it was when I first wrote the tutorials, but you don't need to get bogged down by it all. My advice is to choose a yarn that's good quality, a colour that really calls out to you and maybe a little bit more expensive than the cheapest you can buy, which some people go for because they think their first pair of socks is just a practice pair. My personal recommendation is West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4 Ply and yes, in the interests of full disclosure, I am very biased here as I have a Winnick Mum collection of yarn that I created with them and I happen to think that it's fantastic yarn, but it really is great for beginners. It's good quality yarn made with British wool, it's smooth to knit on your needles, it doesn't turn into a fuzzy mess if it's unravelled, and beginners unravel quite a lot. It washes and it wears well, there's a great choice of colours. Did I mention that I've created my own colourways? It's good value and it's made by a family firm with values that match my own. I could go on, but I think you get the idea. Oh, and one more thing. Can you get a pair of socks out of one ball or skein of yarn? For the most part, the answer is yes. Of course, there will always be exceptions depending on the size of the feet you're knitting for and whether you want to match colours, but contrast heels and toes made from leftovers usually solve that problem. In addition, your hand-knit socks should last a long time. Some of mine are nearly 10 years old, so that actually makes even a more expensive ball of yarn very good value. What about the needles? One of the questions that I get asked most often is, which are the best needles to use? And I have to say that honestly, I can't tell you as it's personal preference. I've written the sock along tutorials for three types of needles, short circular, long circular or magic loop, and DP ends or double pointed needles, which are the traditional way to knit socks and the way most likely to put people off because they look very fiddly. My preference is a 30cm short circular needle, but you can get smaller sizes right down to 20cm which is very tiny indeed. In fact, you'll notice that the Sokolong tutorials mention 30cm needles, as when I first wrote them there wasn't as much choice in needle sizes, but you can substitute whichever needle works for you. And it's really good to try out different types and sizes if you can. I discovered that my hands cramp up with the smaller size circular needles, so I needed to experiment to find the right size and type that suited me. It never hurts to try out different techniques, and I often switch between the short and long circulars and double pointed needles depending on what I'm making. It's good for our brains to change things about. There's an additional tutorial on short circular needles on the blog that I wrote since Super Socks was published, so be sure to take a look at that if you think short circulars might be for you. Tension and sock stitch calculation. The tension swatch, everybody's favorite part of the knitting process. And before you fast forward this section of the video, just hold on a minute. Remember that I said that the sock along tutorials were about giving you the skills to be able to adapt the sock pattern to suit any feet. This is the section where that happens. Hand knitted sock size is based on your foot circumference and not your shoe size. So this is the part where you get your tape measure out and your sock suddenly becomes something that's very personal to you and the way that you knit. Once you have your own personal knitting gauge, and I show you how to do that especially for knitting socks, you can take anybody's measurements and knit socks for them. Need to accommodate wider calves or narrower feet? No problem. Socks for your children or grandchildren? It's easy to adjust the basic four ply socks pattern for smaller feet or larger feet if you want to knit for someone with bigger feet than you. It's really easy, I promise, even if you think that maths isn't your thing because this is knitting maths and it's different. And once you understand it, you're never going to look back. There's not only the sock along photo tutorial for this section, but there's a separate video as well. So don't worry that you won't get it. You're going to be just fine. Accessories and matching stripes. Are you a matcher or a mixer? Do your socks have to look the same or can you wear odd socks? For those of us whose socks have to match, getting two socks the same out of one ball of yarn can seem a bit daunting, but it's not actually as hard as you might think. There's a whole tutorial dedicated to that with a separate video to show you how I get the stripes to match for my socks, both for my own Winnick Mum yarns, which have a particular stripe pattern to them, and for other yarns as well. 
Finally, just before we launch into knitting the sock, there's a quick look at sock anatomy. It makes sense to see how you're going to knit the sock because once you break it down into sections, it's not really as complicated as it might look if you've never knitted a sock before. I speak to so many people who've put themselves off knitting socks for years because they're so worried about the heel section. They've built it up into a huge, scary thing, but I have to tell you that you're just knitting on the same stitches with the same yarn, and if you follow the pattern and the tutorials, your hands will do the magic to create the heel without it being the scary thing that so many people think it is. Trust me, I'm a sock knitter. You can use something called a lifeline at any point during your sock knitting to create a safety net for yourself in case you think you're going to go wrong. And the most that ever goes wrong with a sock is that you unravel and start again, so there's really nothing to worry about. I've created a video on lifelines for my easy lace socks, which you can take a look at if you want to know more about lifelines. And because all of my patterns are based on the basic four ply socks pattern, you can use any of my videos to help if you want to. Now we're on to knitting the socks themselves. If you're using the Super Socks book, you'll see that the instructions are divided by needle type, so you follow the section for the needle type that you've chosen. If you're using the online tutorials, they are divided by sock section, so you can scroll down until you find the part for the needle type that you're using. Whichever format you use, the information is the same. The tutorials follow the pattern that you've already downloaded, and you'll notice that there's just one size given on the pattern. That's because, if you remember, I want you to learn how to adjust the size for yourself so that you can knit socks for any pair of feet. You just change the numbers that are written in the tutorials for the numbers that you need and the sock pattern will still work out and the socks will fit your feet. Remember, the sock along tutorials were written to help you knit a first pair of socks and to learn how to get the right fit for your feet. Once you've knitted your first pair, You'll understand how sock construction works and I can guarantee that even before you've finished that first pair, you'll be thinking about adjustments you can make, about trying out different heels or toes or even incorporating patterns such as lace or cables into your socks for future pairs. There are lots of different patterns based on my basic four ply sock shape on my blog, which you can find here. And there's no shortage of information on different sock techniques on the internet that you might want to try out later. I firmly believe that once you can knit socks, you can do anything. And with your newfound confidence from knitting your first pair, the sky really is the limit. I hope that's been helpful as you start on your new sock knitting adventure. There are lots more patterns and tutorials on the Winnick Mum blog, and you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And I always love to see sock photos on social media, so do tag me if you post any of your photos. Let's get this sock knitting adventure started.